Hello, this is a pathology specimen of an enlarged cystic ovary. We're looking at the cut surface here and turning this around, this is the serosal surface, the outer surface or the capsular surface. And we can see that it is quite smooth and there are no obvious masses on this surface. Now looking at the cut surface, we can see that there are several compartments or several locules to this cystically enlarged ovary. And so we can call this a porci locular cystic ovary. And some of the locules appear to be empty, but in this central one, we can actually see that there are some hairs arising from the wall of this locule or from the lining. And in fact, in this area, there is this brownish area that resembles skin. This is likely to be epidermis, and then we have the subcutaneous structures. This yellowish area may represent adipose tissue or fatty tissue. The diagnosis here is a mature cystic teratoma of the ovary. So what is a teratoma? A teratoma is a type of germ cell tumor which is composed of tissue which arises from any of the three germ cell layers, endodermal, for example, gut tissue, ectodermal, for example, skin, and mesodermal, for example, cartilage or bone. It can be composed of tissues primarily from one of these layers or from all three. There are several types of teratomas. We have the mature ones, which are only composed of mature tissues, and these are benign teratomas. A subset of these are cystic, and therefore they are called mature cystic teratomas, as we saw in the specimen. And there are immature ones, which are considered malignant. These will actually contain immature fetal or embryonal type tissue, for example, neuroepithelial tubules, and these can be recognized microscopically. And then there are teratomas with malignant transformation. So this means that the malignant elements are not immature, but they're actually mature tissues, for example, squamous cell carcinoma or thyroid carcinoma arising in an otherwise mature teratoma. Microscopically, they can contain many elements. As I mentioned, very often they have skin and adnexal elements. So here is the epidermis, which is stratified squamous epithelium. And these are all the sebaceous glands. So hence, often these cyst locules, they accumulate a lot of oily material because of secretions from the sebaceous glands. We can also see some hair follicles here. Here is another closer up example where you can see the hair follicles with the hair shaft in the middle. And these are the sebaceous glands. And here is another example where we can actually see islands of cartilage and we can see adipose tissue as well. Here is another example of a mature cystic teratoma where we can see this solid area comprising skin and adipose tissue. And we can even see well-formed teeth coming out from the wall of these locules. And here is yet another example. This one is a multilocular cyst because there are quite a few uh, separate cyst locules. Again, there is hair material and uh, these whitish areas are likely to represent calcified tissue or calcifications. So we may encounter a variety of tissue types in teratomas and we have to decide whether they are mature or immature and whether the mature elements are benign or malignant. Most commonly, we would have mature cystic teratomas and this brings us back to the original example, which is a classical example of a mature cystic teratoma uh, with several cyst locules, which are thin walled and uh, they contain uh, some hair material, some fatty material and what appears to be skin. So mature cystic teratomas are considered benign if they're only mature elements. All of these tumors need to be examined carefully under the microscope to look for immature elements or malignant elements and the management is to excise these tumors. Thank you.